All right, first things first. In our um, globe manipulation and and explosion exercise, yes, we're going to explode the globe, um, and uh, and we're going to modify it. So uh, first thing we're going to do is go to surface primitive, not freeform, sorry, um, and we're going to drop in a sphere. You've seen this before. I think I dropped it in on the first day of class or something like that. Um, so our sphere is, uh, we're not going to go um, accurate to the size of our globe. We're going to represent it with something that's you know a little easier to work with, like yay big or yay big. One to five feet. Okay. Um, so it has a base plane. The base plane can stay at zero for now. I think that's going to be easy to understand. And a sphere radius. Um, Let's do a slider. 0 to 5.0. Like that. Uh, I need to change the lights real quick. Uh, so, what do you notice on this sphere? It's a little hard to see it, but uh, but oh, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, yes, you do. Uh, you do realize that it's not actually a sphere. Um, that uh, that's a conversation I thought we were going to get to further down the line, but I guess it shows up very easily here. Um, Grasshopper doesn't render. The, the full smoothness of the geometry because it's such a heavy software and it's running such complex processes all the time. So on the graphics side of things, it kind of simplifies it a lot. So you're going to see that the geometry itself doesn't exactly make spheres. Um, but what you're seeing here and what I was hoping you would see is the, uh, the extra line that is created um, around, well, ar exactly along the X plane but on the right side of that sphere. Do you guys see that on your models? Okay, you'll, you'll notice that it is exactly on the X um, plane. So what is that? It's the beginning. If you, if you could find a beginning of a circle, this is it. Um, it is the zero latitude, longitude. The zero longitude, because latitude is like a ladder. It's the horizontal ones. Longitude is the vertical ones, because it goes the length of the planet north and south. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a long time since I used that term. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's the zero. Um, and so what we're going to do is subdivide this thing, and you'll see that it starts to fan out from that point. Um, so let's go to um, our domain division tools and we're using exactly the same configuration that we used in class on Monday um, but now we're using it on a sphere instead of a surface so we're gonna do divide domain squared that's gonna be down here and that was um, under math domain and we're going to bring in, under surface and utility, we're going to bring in ISO trim. Which, remember, once you drop it in, it shows subsurf, not ISO trim. You guys remember the configuration here? I mean, you should, because you all just used it. Um, so it's surface to surface, domain to domain surface to the input of the domain, and you see that it defaults to subdividing by 10. Graphically, it looks a little funky, but um, so, so what, I guys, uh, what I want you guys to think of is, is this as a planet. Okay, so we're going to divide this by um, however many subdivisions there actually are because we want to make it difficult for you guys to look through all the data. Um, so let's get a um, param, and we're going to do a panel, and we're going to divide this by 360. Uh, 
Um, so I forget exactly which direction that was. Yeah, vertical. Okay, cool, vertical. 360 is going to be too much. But um, so that's uh, 360 in the vertical direction. And how many in the horizontal direction? Yeah, 180. Actually, no. Hang on. Let's see, 38 parallel is up there. It should be still be 180. Hang on. Do I have that direction right? We have 180 east, 180 west, and then we have 180 or 90 north and 90 south. Yeah, no, that's so that's right. That should not be breaking. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> maybe these computers can't handle it. Ah, there we go. Okay. So um, there's there's your uh, first um, experience with what happens when you have a lot of data. Uh, sometimes it runs really slow. We're going to encounter that a lot. Um, and uh, this tells me that we probably want to simplify how many subdivisions we're working with. Because the, the logic, so guys, let me, let me kind of gather your attention for a moment. So like I said, this is visual programming, um, which means like we're basically creating a program and it's running that program. So anytime you either connect or disconnect any of these nodes, it reruns the program. So if I start operating on this many subdivisions with this type of geometry and I keep pulling it forward, it's going to have to run that every single time I make a change. So um, sometimes what you wind up doing with very complex definitions is making a smaller sample to get the logic to work. And then once you have the logic working, you can increase the number to get it to be accurate. So we're going to um, reduce this. I want to go down to, um, let's just do 90 and 45. And it will take a moment to catch up still. There we go. So that operated uh, fairly close to um, what we wanted. Um, 90 and 45. Yeah, we could do 90 and 45. Do I want to reduce it more? OK. Um, let's do, let's see. Let's do uh, 30 and 15. That'll work. OK. Yeah, we can visualize this many subdivisions. So. Um, so anyway, uh, what we're going to do here is work on these individual surfaces. So I want you to kind of have a panel in the definition that we can work with. And um, I want you to take a look at that data. So this data is a singular list of 449 surfaces. What we're going to do is move those surfaces away from the base of the um, of the the globe right so we're, we're going to actually relocate them so that they explode away from the center of the planet earth um, so we need to find the center and then we need to map a vector for it to move along okay um, so that's our objective for this first little video here but um so let's do let's go to um i forget where vector vector is it's under vector so we're going to go in under vector and vector and we're going to use vector two point. What vector two point is going to allow us to do is map a vector from a point to another point. Does that, does that make any sense? It's OK. Um, so we're going to map from, from point A to point B. Um, so we need to create a set of points at the center of the globe. And then we need to create a point 
um, at every single one of these panels centroids, if that makes any sense. You know how to find that? It's another one that I want you to remember very closely. Go to surface analysis. We're going to go to area. So this one was under vector, vector. And this one is under surface analysis. So now when I plug this in, I get a centroid on every single one of those surfaces. You guys remember that, right? Um, and I'm just going to place a point in the center. So I'm going to say 0, 0, 0 in Rhino. So now I have that little center point in the middle. And to make things a little bit easier, I'm actually going to reference that point. So that, well, actually, I'll show you why I reference that point. Um, so let's go back to params. I'm going to go to point. I'm going to say set one point and select this here. All right. Am I losing any of you? That's okay. I'm going to go back and sort of recap everything when I close my thought. But why don't you guys just, if, if I've lost you, just pay attention to what I'm doing and why. Um, so, so basically, if I um, map uh, from this point as a base point, to the centroid of all of these. Um, I get a set of vectors. They don't show up immediately, but if you go to display, vector, and vector display, it will. Um, it's going to ask you for the anchor point, which is the base, and then the vector point here. Boom. So what that created was um, vectors that stretch from the center point to each of these centroids around the, la the outside of the circle. Right? So we had to construct that because those are the vectors that we're going to use to move along when we transform this globe. However, um, if I were to um, change the base plane of this sphere, um, let's say I change the base plane to a point that's over here. Set one point, I'm going to select that, and I plug the sphere there. I get this instead. So basically, right now, the way I've set this up, and this is very significant, so I want all eyes on me right now. I set this up so that um, the, the base point of the sphere is separate from the base point that I've created to map the vectors. So the, the important part of kind of learning how to create an efficient definition and a correct definition that's more versatile um, in Grasshopper is to make sure that you're circularly referencing things that are supposed to be tied together. Does that make sense? So in order to do that, I really don't need two separate point values. I would just stretch the same point value across, I'm not gonna break that one actually, I'll use this one, um, across uh, the whole thing. So you're going to get these like little spaghetti wires that are stretching far, far reaches of your definitions on occasion. But what that means is if you take this value and, and you move it, it's going to move with it. So no matter where that geometry goes, now it's all fully tied together. Okay? What questions do you have besides me needing to explain all of that to you over again? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of go through it again. It'll be a little faster, but I think you guys are gonna understand it now that you know the context and you'll be able to keep up.